In this video, we're going to talk about super foams and foam resiliency. Now, this is a very complicated subject, but I'm not going to get into foam chemistries and I may be oversimplifying this considerably. But I'm going to talk about super foams and help you understand their different characteristics. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm going to put a matrix together that takes the six most popular super foams out there and sort of puts them together so you can understand how they relate to one another. So if that sounds interesting, stick around and let's get started. What is foam resiliency? Well, the simplest way of defining it is how fast does a foam bounce back after you deform it? So when you impact a foam, how fast does it push back and kind of go back to its, its you know, uh, default state, the, the, what it's been molded to in the midsole of a shoe? Now, resiliency isn't the same thing as softness or firmness. You can have a very resilient foam that's soft and hard. It, it, it's not the same thing. And foams can be tuned for a lot of things, but resiliency and, and feel are two of the bigger ones. Additionally, foam resiliency is not the responsiveness of the shoe. Responsiveness of a shoe is how the shoe responds to load. Now, the foam plays a major part in that, obviously, but it's not the only part. You get into geometry, you get into technology, you get into the plate, you get into the fit. It's a, it's, there's a lot going on there. And in fact, that's going to be the subject of my next video. So if you'd like to see that, subscribe and you'll see it pop up in your feed. But for the sake of this video, we're just talking about the foam and we're not talking about necessarily responsiveness of any specific shoe. Also, why am I only talking about super foams? Well, super foams are really what have changed running shoes. Since the introduction of uh, Zoom X in the Vaporfly in 2016, 2017, everything that we talk about has changed. You can make an argument that maybe Adidas's Boost Foam was the first super foam, but I think Zoom X really is the one that really changed everything because we're talking about race shoes. We're talking about the top end performance of a brand's line. So these super foams really are where these brands are putting all of their development time and budgets because, you know, these are the shoes that are winning races or they want them to be winning races, but it's also where they can test their technology and it becomes a real hot test bed for their technology and then all of those learnings can trickle back down into the training foams and all the other foams in the line. Now, when we're talking about super foams, we really have to talk about two dominant players first, and that's Nike and Adidas. That's Zoomex versus Lightstrike Pro. Now, these are arguably the most dominant in elite professional road racing results. You look at top 10, top 20, probably even top 50 of any elite or professional road race, and it's going to be dominated by Nike and Adidas shoes. Um, so they both set the benchmark for the rest of the industry to either match or better in some instances. And what's also very interesting about them is that they're very much at opposite ends of the spectrum, which I think then set the playing field that everyone else, all the other brands need to sort of work within again, to match or better these foams. When I'm thinking about Nike's Zoom X foam, there's only one metaphor I've, I've always ever thought of when I'm describing that, and that really is a yoga ball. So think about a yoga ball. When you land on a yoga ball, there is a very pronounced sort of sinking into it. You feel like it's engulfing you, it's surrounding you. There's a slight delay at the bottom of sinking into it, and then it pushes you back out. Now, think about running in a Vaporfly or anything with Zoom X. You get that same feel. You, you land, you sink into it. It feels like it's sort of engulfing your foot or at least surrounding the bottom of your foot. There's a little delay and then it bounces you out. It's a very sort of smooth feel. Where Adidas is sort of the exact opposite of that. Because now you're talking about a shock absorber. So think about if you've ever, you've been riding in a car, you definitely feel there's travel there. You feel that the road is being absorbed, but you don't feel like you're sinking into or being engulfed by anything. So you feel like you're on a platform, if you will. And now when that platform sinks or absorbs, there's no delay and you get this sort of pop back out. Now, when you're running in a Lightstrike Pro shoe, 
you're landing on a very definite foam platform feeling and then there's a snap out like a sudden snap out and it's a very distinctly different feeling than what Nike's going for. Let's take that yoga ball and the chalk absorber and let's build a matrix that will allow us to map six of the more popular super foams out there in one area to see how they relate to one another. Within this matrix, we will have resiliency on one side from low to high, and then we'll have sensation from soft to firm on another. Starting with Nike, what we're gonna end up here really is they are most positively in the upper left corner where it's a very high resiliency foam, but it has a very soft feel overall. The next one would be Lightstrike Pro, which again, as I said, is on the opposite end of the spectrum. It's still a very high resiliency foam, but it's a very firm ride. And again, these two foams set the playing field for everyone else to work within. So when we're talking about four other popular super foams out there, let's start with Saucony. Saucony's Power Run Super Foam has a bunch of different flavors to it, but I would say they all would be in the softer side on the sensation scale, but they're maybe not as high resiliency as a Nike uh, Zoom X foam. And I think that's by design because I think Nike's foams can be very extreme. And I think uh, Nike shoes can actually feel very aggressive and very extreme, particularly for runners who maybe aren't looking for that. So I think Saucony has really developed their super foam around that idea of making something that still has most of the qualities of what Zoom X is doing, but it's maybe a little bit more user friendly. And I think that user friendliness speaks a lot to what Saucony is designing right now and why the Endorphin series is so popular with so many runners. Moving on to New Balance and their fuel cell foam, I would really put this in the middle of it's, it, it is a soft foam, but it's, it's, neat, it's not as resilient. There isn't as much rebound in this foam as either Saucony or Nike. And again, that's not a negative thing. I think New Balance is also doing a lot of stuff with geometries of shoes and the other technologies in their shoes. And I, again, I think they've developed fuel cell to be on the softer side, but maybe a little bit more neutral to allow them to tune that in different ways with the overall construction of their shoes. Asics, I think, is in the same area as New Balance here. Flight Foam has a lot of different flavors to it, but overall, I think... ASICS has developed a super foam or a family of super foams that are a little bit firmer than, you know, Nike, Saucony, or New Balance. And the resiliency is very neutral. However, if you look at ASICS's line of shoes, there's a lot of different geometries. There's a lot of different configurations of the plate. And I think they're using the technology and the geometry to really tune how that foam works. And lastly, we have Brooks. And I think Brooks would fall in a very firm feeling foam with very low resiliency. Now, I don't think that's a negative thing. I think Brooks knows their customer and I think they've been very um, clear with what DNA Flash is. It hasn't changed much and it's been very consistent over generations. Because again, I think Brooks knows its customer and I think what Brooks is trying to do is develop a super shoe with a super foam that has a much more traditional ride to it. So if you know everything else on this matrix is too extreme or it's kind of too new school, you want just that tried and true sort of running shoe feel, but you want some of the modern technology in there and some of the modern benefits of a super foam. I think that's what Brooks is really going for at DNA Flash and particularly in the Hyperion lines. And I think they do it really well. So when you look at this entire scale, I think you can look at the quadrants in, in three ways, really. If you're looking at the extreme on the left, you have something that's very bouncy. And I think Zoom X foam, you can always describe as bouncy. No matter what flavor, if it's in a race shoe or not, it's always gonna be a very bouncy foam. I think Power Run from Saucony can range between bouncy to just plain soft. But again, I think there's quite a range there and they do overlap between bouncy to plush. Now, plush, I would actually call Fuel Cell and Flight Foam from New Balance and Asics. To me, they're both very plush foams. They have a broad range and they have a broad range of uses. And again, I think both brands are being very clear in what they're developing their super foam to be. And then you have Brooks and Adidas that I would put in a very direct category. But again, 
different feel. Adidas has a very high resiliency, so it's a very snappy, very aggressive feel, where Brooks is much lower, where it's still firm, it's still direct, but it doesn't have that same level of snap. And even if they want that snap, if Brooks wants that snap in a shoe, they're tuning that with, you know, different technologies with a plate, you know, what else they're doing in the shoe. And again, I think they're being very clear what they're trying to do here. So when you look at this matrix all together, there isn't a negative sort of side to this. There isn't an area where it's sort of a failure. None of these foams is really bad. They just serve different purposes. I think each brand is designing them or engineering them in different ways for different uses. And I think as runners, we all benefit from this because now when you're looking at the scale, there's a large range that's going to fit what you like to run in, what your preference is. And even it's going to get to the level of your your biomechanics, how you run, what your gait is, what you're really looking for. And as runners, we have a ton of option here. And that's amazing because just a few years ago, we really didn't. And I think it's really exploded since then. And it's a great time to be a runner because there is a ton of options to find what's going to work best for you. So there you go. There's there's my feelings on where super foams sort of relate to one another and talking a lot about form resiliency. So let me know in the comments what you think. If you have any questions on this, it's a very complicated subject. There's a lot more that goes into this. But like I said in the upfront, I'm trying to streamline this as much as possible to make it as digestible as possible. So any questions, ask them in the comments. Definitely love replying to those. As always, subscribe to this channel. If you're not already subscribed, you'll see more content like this pop up in your feed. Dropping a like on, on this video or any of my videos helps this channel grow and continue to grow, which is amazing. And with that, I will see you in the next one.